Great. Uh, so good day to uh, everybody, uh, wherever you're joining in from. Uh, my name is Arjuna Srinidhi, and I'm a researcher at the Water uh, Center for Resilient Studies, or WCRES. Uh, the event we are hosting today is uh, organized by ECOBARI, and uh, ECOBARI stands for Ecosystem-Based uh, Adaptation uh, for Resilient uh, Incomes. So uh, this is a very new initiative that we just launched uh, about a year back. So let me just begin with an introduction to you know who uh, and what Ecobari uh, is. So Ecobari is a, a network of individuals and institutions, representatives of um, government uh, organizations, civil society organizations, businesses, academic groups, NGOs, uh, and media working towards upscaling ecosystem-based adaptation or EBA. Uh, practices in India. As I mentioned, Ecobari was just launched about a year back, so this also happens to be our uh, first anniversary. And uh, today we are up to a group of uh, 10 institutions, all uh, quite keen to grow in membership by bringing like-minded uh, people and institutions together and uh, increase our uh, influence uh, in upscaling EBA in India. Uh, for more information, you can visit uh, the website mentioned there at the bottom, uh, water.org slash ecobari. Um, there is also a form at the bottom of that page where you can leave an expression of interest uh, to be a part of this uh, collaborative. But now coming uh, to the uh, issue at hand and, and how does this concept of EBA uh, connect with the issue of FPOs? I think this would be of interest to us. EBA, as many of you are aware, is uh, the use of biodiversity and the vast services of nature um, and ecosystems to draft our sustainable development and climate change adaptation plans. And Water has been working on the implementation of EBA for several uh, years now with different stakeholders like Gram Panchayats, Village Development Committees, SHGs, and also very recently with um, FPOs. Water also directly works in setting up and promoting FPOs in many states. Uh, to date, we have around 37 FPOs in Maharashtra, Odisha, Rajasthan, Telangana, and Charkhand. That includes about 13,500 uh, shareholders. And uh, in collaboration with NABARD, we are also currently undertaking quite a large uh, baseline study uh, to understand issues related to infrastructure, human capital, market linkages, and access to finance, and other challenges faced by, by FPOs. But keeping in mind these issues that smallholder farmers face, the state of agrarian challenges um, in drain-fed areas, we hope that e through EBA, uh, and especially EBA through FPOs, we can help bridge this uh, apparent gap, this apparent divide between the need for resilient incomes and maintaining the health of uh, ecosystems. And our research center, WCRES, is in fact currently working on developing and pilot testing a methodology for capacity building and implementation of EBA through FPOs. And we hope we can share more on this uh, in the coming year. And coming to the agenda for today, uh, following this uh, welcome section, uh, we have a presentation that will uh, set the, the context for all the issues that we are dealing with related to FPOs. We then have presentations from three uh, very interesting FPOs, each with a unique uh, story to share. And we will then move to a panel discussion uh, where we will have where these uh, FPO representatives will be joined by stakeholders involved in other aspects of the FPO value chain, including buyers and finance and capacity building. And finally, we will end with some concluding uh, remarks. So some um, quick housekeeping announcements uh, before we proceed. The event is being organized in a webinar format, so. Uh, not everybody, not all the attendees may get a chance to uh, opportunity to speak, but however, we actively encourage your comments uh, and questions. You may use the chat feature to leave any general comments for specific questions uh, related, uh, directed at any speakers or the panel in general, please use the Q&A function. This will be captured by our moderator and will be, and, uh, and based on the available time, a few selected questions will be posed to the panel and it will be addressed. But all your comments and questions in general will be captured by us in the post-event reporting. Uh, we also encourage the, the panelists and speakers in the interest of maintaining bandwidth. While you're not presenting, if you want, you can also choose to keep your video off. That's, that's fine. Um, and we'd also try and stick to the time so that uh, we have some interesting uh, time for discussions, which will be the most interesting part of the event, I think. 
So to help stick to the time, I think I should also um, wrap up soon. But before I, I do wrap up, I would like to uh, introduce the person who will be, who's taking up the important and challenging task of moderating the session today. And for this, we are honored to have with us uh, N. Srinivasan, who many of you know very well. Srinivasan has four decades of experience in dealing with development finance and rural livelihoods. And after 30 years with RBI and Nabad, he has uh, engaged in design, supervision, strategic advice, and implementation support for several development finance and rural livelihood initiatives uh, in India and abroad. He has authored the Microfinance India State of uh, the Sector Reports jointly with Girija Srinivasan and currently serves as an independent director on the board of a bank, agri value chain company and advisor to several uh, development networks. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for all your time and support uh, for this event. And I hand it over to you to take things forward. Well, thank you, Arjuna. I, I should uh, thank Water, Chris, and also Ecobari for uh, arranging this uh, discussion on FPOs. We know that FPOs have become a fairly popular institution in the recent past, uh, especially in the last about two, three years. Um, but any amount of discussions, any amount of knowledge that we want to place on board on FPOs, their functioning, their operation, their future is still uh, not going to meet adequately the demand at different corners of the country. Um, because it's an emerging uh, institution, um, it is community based. Also, it has to be supported by policy and it cannot handle itself just because it is socially mobilized well. It has to interact with the larger market facing ecosystem, whether it is buyers and sellers, whether it is suppliers of finance. So, a whole um, host of institutions that are commercial in nature have to deal with the FPOs and the FPOs in turn uh, should learn how they interact uh, in a marketplace and do it in a manner that is uh, geared to pass on the best benefits to the members. So in seen in that context, uh, this kind of uh, webinars and discussions uh, actually provide a lot of information to the FPOs. And I'm happy to see that here the panelists are practitioners. They are not going to talk about why the policy was set or why some budget was allocated. This is more about what are the implications of the policy work or government budgets or in fact uh, the kind of operation that they do in what manner things work and in what manner we can improve uh, the way the FPOs function. At the country level, I think the most recent information available about number of farmer producer companies, it, it says it's about 16,000 companies. And uh, we are adding, uh, I think, quite a bit. I think last year alone, more than uh, 6,500 companies were set up, which means uh, for every working day, there is about, uh, say, two and a half companies or so, which is a fairly rapid uh, growth in this institution class. And uh, where all these companies are going to go for capital, for finance, for marketing systems, and also uh, who is going to ensure that members get a fair deal? These are some of the larger questions which uh, exist there. And in between, uh, share capital from hard earned uh, incomes of member farmers are being collected. They would like to see a payback on that. Uh, sooner if not later. So how this is going to come to be? These are some of the what we call larger uh, issues uh, at the macro level. When it comes to micro level, these questions have a much more intense personal focus from a company point of view, from a member point of view, and also from the hundreds of resource institutions which are working with these FPOs in the sector. So to help us deal with some of these aspects, we have got a fairly rich panel. I'll be introducing them by and by. Uh, to begin with, we have got a person who has been involved in this right from his days when he, when he was in the College of Agricultural Banking with Reserve Bank of India in Pune when he wrote one of the first uh, definitive articles on FPOs. So Emmanuel Murray 
he is no stranger to development having been with uh, nabard for a fairly long time about two and a half decades he was there then he decided he is going to do more intense uh, development work in the field so he left and uh, he worked with uh, i think manavia huh? Uh, part of oiko credit which is a dutch finance firm uh, which which of course a brilliant record of working in agriculture related teams and also with cooperatives in particular and from there he has now moved over to caspian investment advisor who were originally a private equity company but if you look at the profile of what they do they finance fpos uh, they try and find financial solutions for some of the intractable seemingly intractable problems of fpos and of course uh, emmanuel at a personal level is a great mentor for a number of startups uh, his linkedin followership is something to envy uh, because these are not people who are there to wave a flag they are actually people who get something out of mare's immense experience of dealing with development related aspects so i, I uh, look forward to hearing from mare now on uh, how he is going to set the tone uh, and more particularly um, meaning the way he is now uh, trying to manage from one of the dedicated funds which i see from his profile the caspian leaf um, uh, is one of the things that he is managing for some time now so, so how do fpos actually uh, find the finance space the capital space and beyond that uh, the credit space and how, how does this work out for those who are in the nascent stage still this might be some interesting area but i'm not restricting the scope of what you would like to say mare because you always have the big and small picture fairly well knitted together over to you thank you thank you so much sir i'll share my screen uh, i think uh, i have been uh, given the privilege of setting the tone for this discussion with uh, talking about the fpo landscape in india as on today uh, as uh, shrinivasan sir was saying there are over 17000 fpos today and i have put the word over particularly because it is more than that we don't have a definitive number and uh, of these 3800 and we informed under the government's uh, 10000 fpo scheme this number is of course officially shared with me so we can confidently say that so fpo program has uh, mainstreamed from you know being a program of sfac or of nabard it has now become a program of the government of india and uh, this fpo is seen as a component of the overall mandate given to of doubling farmers income in various ways the efforts that are being made and now adding to that is the idea of the indian economy becoming a 5 trillion economy uh, making small farms viable and now of course as the discussion in this uh, session sustainable farming also so earlier we used to have just sfac and nabard but today we have uh apex institution called the project management authority and then uh 14 institutions have been identified as implementing agencies including ncdc and many others and uh, on the ground there are what are called cbbo structures uh some states have taken lead in this and are way ahead of others maharashtra being at the top with almost 33% of all fpos being in maharashtra uh because of the approach that is being taken of a very quick 3 year 10000 fpo achievement this program has turned into a kind of a race for numbers which it wasn't earlier so that is one issue that it is facing and many agencies with no prior experience of field work have also entered into this race and that has added to the complexity and because they don't have the competencies they're trying to engage subcontractors to actually work on the ground which is again adding to the complex nature of this program the third point i would like to state is that some of these fpos as soon as they're getting into business and being formed are trying to see infrastructure as the starting point rather than building business and working capital 
and then going into creating of infrastructure, which itself has many unknowns, imponderables that go with it. Fund release to FPOs has been very slow and uncertain. Review meetings talk about achieving targets, uh, prefer not to speak about fund releases. And uh, as overall at the global level itself, 30% of the budget will actually go to FPOs. The rest will go for capacity building monitoring. And in a way, the funding that is being given for this program is inadequate to actually execute a program of this scale. And therefore, quality at every level is being compromised. So even CEOs are uh, of not of the caliber that is required, you know, because it's uncertain when they get paid. So have somebody who's local. All these kinds of issues are coming up with this program. On the financing side, I think uh, the equity side I didn't mention about, but on the debt side, the good thing is that a large number of institutions today are lending to FPOs. And uh, overall, as I see, close to a thousand crore would be available for funding to FPOs. We have banks like Bank of Baroda, HDFC Bank, Kotak, and all these three banks have dedicated verticals looking at financing FPOs. Napkisan has done considerable work in financing. Samunati, uh, without doubt, is represented in the panel. We'll speak about it. Ananya, FWWB. So there's enough and more of money available. A new entity, a guarantee company has been set up. It's a trust uh, which guarantees loans given to FPOs. So that kind of uh, releases or makes the capability to give more funds. The Agri-Infrastructure Fund of the Government of India is now available to FPOs. Quite a few of them have accessed it to take financing. And uh, one key finding that we have noticed is where working capital has been given to FPOs, their ability to rotate that money has been low. In effect, in many FPOs, the interest cost itself has not been able to be met out of the business profits that were earned from doing business. So that's a concern that we have. Uh, some of the success stories uh, against Srinivas and Sir wanted me to highlight. And uh, I'll just talk about uh, Chetra Organic, for example, uh, which is into organic cotton, by far the largest in the country with a turnover of 42 crore and a profit of 80 lakhs, uh, planning much bigger, likely to be around 50 plus crore this year. Uh, the Jharkhand Women Self-Supporting Cooperative, again, a cooperative structure, uh, went through heavy downsides when there was a price crash in poultry, but has been able to bounce back and uh, doing exceedingly well. And uh, another coffee co uh, FPC in Araku that I would like to highlight, who has been able to give 45% better procurement price to the farmer members than other players in the market itself, which includes Nandi Foundation and other people. So these are some success stories. There are plenty of them. And uh, I think the optimism is there that things will be good. Uh, looking ahead again, if we look forward against many odds, you know, many people are skeptics, critics, uh, do not think things will work. But 20% of FPOs, in my view, because I'm a um, director on Napkisan and uh, we lend to FPC. So in many ways, I look at the whole uh, panorama of these institutions and more than 20% are really doing exceptionally well against many odds and will be very successful institutions. But I think if overall we see even 25% succeed, it'll be great. More than that uh, will be a bonus. So for the other things, I think we need solutions of solving problems to increase the success rate beyond 25. The core question for us who are, you know, beyond target racing towards targets is how do we keep these institutions as with members at the focus, at the center? That would be it. How can we uh, better the returns to the farmers and better the life of its members how do we make these institutions sustainable in the long run? How do we retain their cooperative character? And how do we balance social and business interests? You know, women, FPOs, uh, small farmer participation. These are all questions which keep coming up. 
in terms of the investment that is given, in terms of the support that is provided, it's very small, but the expectations from FPOs is very, very large. And how we balance these is going to be the key factor in the future. And institutions like Water, who are you know long-term players on the ground, are going to be definitely having a big role to play in the sustainability of this program beyond you know the initial hype that is created around it. And uh, with that, I think I'll just stop. Uh, I will be available to answer questions. And uh, I would hand over to Srinivasan, sir, for the rest of the session. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Maharaj. That was quite fascinating. Within a yeah, 10 minute time, you have packed in such a lot of what do you call not only facts, but messaging as well. Your questions are uh, absolutely quite interesting. I got a few questions for you, uh, but then don't go away. When, when we get back, those I'll questions be around. Really I'll be around, surely. Thank you. I, I, I would also just put the questions already to you so that when we come back towards the end, we check in the light of what has all come in. One is about what's your own guess on what percentage of FPCs uh, over time will do a good enough job by their members. I'm not talking about even high performance, super profit, super business, but they actually deliver something of value to their members. What kind of proportion we are talking about, given that it is 17,000 last minute or something, because every minute something more is getting added and we don't even have the numbers of cooperatives there. This is one, what do you call that kind of question. Um, the second uh, is also about in what ways the support that is coming through can be optimized and made much more focused. These are two larger questions. Later on, I will come to you towards the end of the session to uh, pick your brains on a few other aspects as well. Um, now that the tone has been set, we know the macro, the micro, and also there is a lot of optimism given the uh, excellent performance of the three samples which uh, Marie had talked about. And quite a number of us know at least two or three or uh, four cases anecdotally which, which are doing really well. But let us also look at um, one of the high performing FPOs now, uh, Vilas Ji is with us. Um, he is the CEO and the Managing Director of uh, Sahyad Reform and Vilas Shinde is known to be uh, a fantastic speaker in earlier panels also. I think I have interacted with him on a couple of occasions. Um, of course, he is uh, homegrown in the sense he is from the Rahuri MPKV, an agricultural engineer and uh, he has been involved in agriculture for more than two decades. Now he is heading the largest FPC. Uh, the FPC, of course, uh, is a couple of, uh, what do you call, blocks put together. So there are about 17,000 farmers are there, members of this, and uh, the turnover is something which even some of the larger commercial firms would be envious about, about 750 crores in turnover they are doing. The most important part is that, uh, yeah. led by Vilaji, the FPC is always looking towards uh, market-driven solutions, innovations, and trying to look at alternative ways of marketing traditional crops. So Vilasji, you are 10 minutes start now. So let us know what's uh, in store for FPCs born out of your experience. And uh, how do you think the FPCs can make sense to their members? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, can you hear me properly? Everyone is able to hear, I think. I do. Yes. Yes, and, yes. yes. Uh, my screen is visible? Yes. Okay. Uh, shall I uh, speak about Sayadri uh, first? Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You can make it full screen, sir, and then you can start. Yeah, you can make it full screen. And uh, the other general aspects also you have to cover within your time. So please be mindful of the time as well. We'll ask you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the background uh, for uh, farmer producer company, we all know very well what is the situation in uh, rural community and uh, specifically in the agriculture uh, economy, the challenges, uh, we are all aware about the challenges and in that uh, the individual farmer situation, about that also we are uh, well aware that why uh, small farmers are in a different condition and why the exploitation is happening, why they are making losses. So there are multiple uh, reasons, but the most important reason is that 
they cannot negotiate with because of the small scale they cannot scale up they cannot compete in the market they cannot take the risk because of the their uh, current uh, situation with the small scale and with the limited capital with the limited access to the market and uh, one side the traditional agriculture supply chain about that also we are uh, uh, known about that the multiple layers from farmer to the consumer there are at least seven uh, four to seven layers and all these uh, multiple stakeholders in between farmer and uh, retailer or uh, consumer they are trying to control the supply chain and that uh, impacts on the farmer's return and also on the consumer side uh, overall uh, challenge so because of that uh, we all know that uh, the main uh, challenge we need to uh, uh, handle this uh, situation is to create a uh, ecosystem complete ecosystem uh, from farm to the produce uh, from farm to the plate and it should be owned by the farmer then only the farmer can get the real uh, return or the the maximum return to his uh, uh, produce and uh, this value chain if uh, are co competing in the global market and uh, also if it is a cross specific then we can have the right hit to the target and for that the different formats whether it is a, a producer company format or a co cooperative format or self help uh, format any farmer collective that is a must um, uh, yes, a need of our for the agriculture community and with that thought uh, we have started our journey in 2011 as a sahidri farmers producer company with the clear vision that how we can solve all the issues of our member and how we can make uh, farming profitable and sustainable uh, in all the circumstances and one side um, uh, along with the farmer issues we also understand that if we are creating value for the consumer then only uh, the, the, this value chain can be a sustainable uh, approach along with the uh, farmer and consumer we also need to take care of other stakeholder specifically the environment uh, for the sustainable uh, approach and also how we can empower other stakeholders whether it is our worker or whether it is our supplier in a different role so the overall uh, stakeholders um, their uh, sustainability that is a core objective uh, at organization level and for that we took the approach uh, c2 plate how we can intervene at different level at post service level at market level and at farm level with end to end approach that was our strategy and uh, With that uh, this is a uh, structure which we building last 12 years uh, sayadri is a um, main uh, crops are horticulture crops all are perishable crops in nasik uh, nasik is known as grapes and uh, onion uh, um, uh, capital of the country and uh, in that along with the uh, grapes onion other fruits are also important like pomegranate banana mangoes and in vegetable tomato is also main crop in our area so with that uh, understanding we have created uh, this uh, ecosystem the core company sayadri farmers producer company is owned by 726 uh, individual shareholders who are all grape growers as uh, grape is our uh, main crop um, uh, on uh, on person side i am doing uh, grape farming since last uh, 25 years so the first um, our uh, target was grape crop and uh, after that we added other horticulture crops and considering the the um, challenging situation of different horticulture crops in the nature and also the uh, organizational levels management uh, issues we created this structure that uh, uh, instead of uh, giving shares uh, to, uh, to all the members in main company we decided that the, the 726 number will restrict and after that uh, we'll give shares to the other farm producer company in our area in that uh, most of the producer companies are uh, promoted by ourselves as a crop wise producer company and as a, a zone wise producer company and along with that then uh, we have uh, added uh, other uh, like minded producer company from uh, our area and from maharashtra so currently the number is uh, 16000 plus <clears throat> as a member of the uh, sayadri uh, oral group in that uh, 726 are shareholding main company others are shareholding our uh, member producer company and uh, if you see the this is the structure this is the structure is actually develop uh, based on the amul model that the, at every level producer uh, production level uh, at processing level and marketing level you need a uh, different strength different challenges and accordingly uh, we have created this structure uh, farmer then the producer company uh, holding uh, producer company sayadri farm producer company and then the subsidiary of uh, holding producer company in that uh, money is uh, sayadri farms post service care limited second is sayadri supply chain limited and sayadri retail so considering the different uh, uh, valuation level challenges uh, this uh, 
structures has built uh, considering the different challenges capital challenge then the infrastructure challenge marketing capabilities uh, different skills at different level so considering all this uh, we have built as per our experience in horticulture uh, we know that uh, there is no support from the government side there is no msp system working the horticulture crops so farmer is always dependent on the uh, on the supply demand situation for the uh, price so sometimes uh, there is a glut situation sometimes there is a shortage situation and because of that price is continuously fluctuating so in case of glut situation everybody is expecting that uh, uh, at least cost of production should be uh, covered minimum support price is expected in that situation and when there is shortage maximum realization is expected so considering all this uh, different scenario uh, we try to focus on uh, efficient marketing also efficient post harvest to reduce the losses uh, at uh, after the uh, uh, harvesting and also efficient farm management to create the better productivity better uh, quality improvement so with this strategy uh, we are uh, trying to build a value at different level and that has impacted on our balance sheet if you see the growth uh, from uh, 2012 to 2022 uh, from 14 crore uh, company has uh, reached to 786 crore plus uh, sales and from the beginning uh, this producer company is a profit making organization as we believe that uh, if organization is uh, making a profit then only it can be a sustainable organization and that organization then can create a real impact on the uh, members of uh, their uh, farm level uh, business and um, from the beginning we try to build our own capital as we uh, we are very uh, clear about uh, our uh, challenges and about our uh, vision that we have to build organization uh, which will uh, run at least for 100 years for the next four year four generation we are building this organization so that that organization foundation should be very strong and for that we have to take our own uh, initiative we should not depend upon government we should not uh, uh, expect uh, support from the outside of people first initiative should, uh, should be from the member itself so we try to build the capital based uh, with the uh, strong uh, thought uh, the 55 crores capital uh, base has built in first uh, six year period as a paid up capital uh, so we build a resource uh, uh, through our uh, profit uh, in the last uh, few years period and uh, with that then uh, further the journey has uh, started as we know that uh, Sayadri is known for the grape uh, as a grape uh, valuation which we have building uh, first five, five years period uh, in that uh, Sayadri reached to the uh, topmost level as a leading grape expert from the country but uh, for that uh, there is a huge uh, background uh, on personal level I try to develop uh, my uh, grape farming uh, as an integrated value chain with the help of uh, our 10 farmers member and then that uh, gave uh, background to the Sayadri in initial phase and because of that uh, because uh, because of the uh, strong background also with the clear vision and clear uh, strategy we reached to the uh, grape industry uh, on the top level for that a lot of uh, initiatives we took on the technology side traceability system computer so from the farm to the pack house systems, digitalization of the crop advisory systems, continuous support to the member uh, with the help of uh, based agronomies from the different part of the world, uh, regular uh, exclusive visits uh, to the different countries, then um, uh, building the uh, centralized pack house system uh, with the uh, 300 uh, ton per day capacity, then importing the different uh, planting material, uh, recent uh, uh, the climate change challenge we know at that point, that is becoming the uh, most important uh, threat for the farming. And for that, the sustainable solution on the planting material. So for that, uh, we took initiative. The, uh, around 27 different varieties we imported uh, uh, from the different uh, grape varieties domain, uh, which is actually uh, helping us uh, to fight with the different uh, climate-related challenges and also market-related challenges. So after uh, grapes, then uh, uh, considering the seasonal nature and uh, monocropping challenge of horticulture crops we decided that uh, we should focus on other horticulture crops also along with the grapes uh, to uh, solve this seasonal nature uh, issue and uh, also monocropping uh, threat at farm level so uh, then uh, in next phase uh, we focus on building the other horticulture crops uh, ecosystem along with grapes in that uh, we added mango tomato seed corn pomegranate banana and recently we have added cashew and uh, citrus as uh, our focus crops and considering all these eight uh, different horticulture crops, uh, we have focused on building the infrastructure, common infrastructure at 110 acres campus in uh, um, Mohadi village near Nasik. 
uh, in this campus, so we have all the integrated infrastructure, our farmer facility center uh, to support our members in different uh, way. Uh, in that we have uh, input centers, weather sessions and sensor infrastructure, consumer mall, R&D, uh, the farm, nursery infrastructure. And along with that, on post service side, we have different infrastructure to handle our produce in different way, so fresh food and vegetable infrastructure, then semi-process uh, infrastructure like IQ facilities, SAP facilities, then the value-added lines like um, you know, ketchup jams, precious line, SAP juices line, also the waste management, uh, uh, that uh, all the skin and seed that is utilized for different integrated production. We have also support infrastructure in the form of lab, uh, soil water testing labs, biopesticide labs, and then residue testing labs. So these are uh, some pictures of the infrastructure. Yes. So yeah, they focus on the food safety uh, factor from the beginning, considering that uh, we have to fight uh, in the global market. And uh, uh, if we want to win the consumer, we need to think about the consumer's expectation on the safety, health and affordability. And because of that, uh, 22 different certification programs uh, we have uh, at Sayadri ecosystem level. And because of this approach, uh, different customers are connected with Sayadri from the global names like uh, um, different uh, supermarkets like Pesco, Lidl, then uh, Coop, uh, then uh, Vetros, and uh, processing companies like Unilever. Almost 42 countries uh, Sayadri product has reached in last uh, 12 years period, processed product and fresh products. We are working with Unilever uh, for manufacturing of their uh, Kisan brand products, uh, ketchups, jams, crashes. All the ingredients are coming from the, our farmers and semi-processed product is also manufactured at uh, Sayadri. So it is becoming the end-to-end -end solution for the brand and also for the member. We have also started our uh, retail operation in small farm in Pune, Mumbai, Nasi. E-commerce uh, platform uh, was initiated uh, in, uh, during lockdown period. We have also another wing, uh, B2B business uh, wing in the form of e-commerce uh, to connect the small retailers to our farmers. Almost 30,000 plus retailers are connected with the Sayadri to our e-commerce platform. We have also initiated a skill development activity at uh, our campus with the help of Tata Stripe. Jointly, this skill development center uh, uh, has um, built almost uh, different, uh, <coughs> plus different courses and uh, 1200 plus uh, students are passed out through the training center. Recently, uh, two years back, we have started uh, one uh, another initiative in the campus, incubation center for horticulture, pharma producer companies. So like Sayadri, how we can uh, create a sustainable um, pharma producer company in the horticulture sector. For that, along with uh, other uh, institute like Digital Impact Square, Tata Strive, and uh, Srini, uh, this initiative has started in campus to support other pharma producer companies. We also understand the importance of technology uh, while building these uh, ecosystems. So Sayadri um, uh, has focused on uh, supporting the different agri-tech startups to uh, create the solution for our members and also for other horticulture crops. So there are uh, different solutions has built uh, with the help of Sayadri. Mm. And in that digital impact sphere, the Tata uh, TCS foundations, uh, their initiative in NASI. So both uh, together we are supporting these uh, different startups. And that helps to, to Sayadri to create a digitalized uh, value chain. And uh, because of that, we are now in position to give complete receptivity of all our products to all the customer, whether it is overseas or in domestic customer. And because of this, the uh, complete uh, control on the ecosystem, now we are in position to solve our all the problems as a community, whether it is uh, uh, our agriculture economics problems or uh, other uh, different community problems uh, on the field education or different uh, physical infrastructure side. So this is the overall journey of Sayadri in the last uh, 12 years period. And I think uh, with this experience, um, uh, I can uh, keep some opinion on uh, this platform that as a pharma producer company, uh, what we have learned that uh, this uh, entity should be considered purely as an enterprise, though uh, we know that the small farmers are the member of uh, organization. And uh, in that uh, every farm, uh, if we treat as an enterprise, if it is purely clear, uh, treated as an enterprise, like any entrepreneur, and APC uh, are treated like any uh, startup activity. So uh, in that view, uh, definitely, we can understand our challenges that uh, how we can, uh, we need to solve the capital problem, how we can uh, need to connect uh, marketing uh, the right way with the organized way, uh, also importance of the infrastructure at different level. 
so uh, that thought uh, can be built at different level at the farmer level at the organization level and at the government level yeah vilas ji what i would do is i'm going to get back to you with some specific questions okay um, on some of these uh, thoughts on looking to your experience how we can make some of the other grow much bigger than what they are and how they should go about uh, i think now we will allow the other two pan three panelists to continue and i know it is very unfair to uh, ask you to condense what you have done and lessons from there within a period of 10 minutes and even in 15 minutes it is not getting done yeah. we are sorry maybe we should have a fire side no, chat rather than so sure. 12 minute session for you yeah. i'll get back to you with question during the question answer session i hope that will be fine with you right, right? yeah um yeah that's uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, yeah sweep of what um, you have managed to do um, in sahyadri farms uh, from right from farm technology to exports setting up your own facilities of several types to ensure that you could actually compete as a level player in the market i think it has been a fascinating journey and it is not purely the the technical side of things the commercial side of things also have borne fruit uh, much beyond uh, what do you call the growth rates of many enterprising private sector entities so in a community based organization to achieve this it's it's not a small achievement now i turn to the sahaja group we have got um, mr krishna prasad the founder and uh, director of uh, sahaja samrudha and also somesh who is the ceo of uh, sahaja organics so this uh, group is working towards finding uh, new markets for organic uh, farm produce and uh, trying to leverage the network of existing farmers in this journey of how to make uh, organic produce sell at premium prices how to create uh, new market spaces for this um, the mr krishna prasad is an ashoka fellow has received the national innovative award uh, and mr somesh uh, who has a background in retail and also in finance he is in charge of all the operations here so the next 10 minutes belong to both of you and uh, if you take lesser time than that you will have a bonus in the question and answer session i'll give you more time then thanks shrinivas over to you uh, krishna ji thanks shrinivas sir uh, namaste this is the sahaja story basically sahaja samrudha is an organic farmers collective uh, since 22 years we are working on uh, uh, you know converting small farmers into an organic and more interestingly it's like a sahaja's main objective is to revival of traditional crops to tell you frankly we don't have any idea to set up a market and create anything new we were very new to this because as a farmer group our intention is to grow as much as possible different rices millets roots and tubers that is what our interest to bring back the rich um, uh, seed diversity but the story started one of our farmer he grew the medicinal rice so no market is like the local dalals asked at a throw away price look at that with a great difficulty he collected the traditional seed he grew that uh, medicinal rices but market asked at very lower price even lesser than the normal rice so that is what we felt a shame and why can't we create something new market for the small and marginal farmers especially for the traditional crops this is what the concept of sahaja organics born even prior to that we have also tried many uh, exp- you know experiments to create markets for the traditional crops it's like a sahaja conserving more than 1000 rice varieties more than 150 millet varieties so look at that these are all new to the market so then we have evolved our own different concept convince the consumers that is what the concept of the red rice mela because we learned not the indian uh, uh, consumers know only basmati and the south indians knows the sona masuri and sometimes ponni no one knows what is gandakashala or uh, navara or uh, ratnachudi this is what you know uh, with the help of the nabard we created this new venture like a organizing melas then people started where this uh, uh, organic foods available 
So this is what uh, Sahaja Organics evolved. And one more interesting thing, from beginning, very clear. We want to set up a model not to depend on the government. Yes, we take the government support, not in financial. It's like only the partnership to organize some programs, but not any financial support from the government or external agencies. This is what the story, uh, you know, how we built a farmer-owned uh, producer company. Now it's owned by farmers and run by the professionals. I invite uh, Somesh, our CEO, uh, just to uh, narrate our uh, uh, story. Uh, thank you, Krishna Prasad, sir. So can I go to the next slide? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, this, uh, as uh, Krishna Prasad sir told, so producer company, we started in February 2010. Uh, with now the shareholders earlier, we, we started with only 10 farmers and then exp expanded with the farmer groups and commodity wise farmer groups and individual farmers. So together now it is 724 farmers are there and seven directors. And still the capital is 31,12,500 uh, is the capital. The main aspiration of the producer company is marketing of traditional and organic produce of our farmers and premium price for the products and distribution of profit uh, to the our producers. So next slide. So this is our uh, uh, structure, like uh, Sahaja Samrudha is working on uh, as an NGO uh, with the farmers to convert uh, from inorganic to organic and conservation of traditional seeds and all. So now we started with the Sahaja Organics in 2010 to market the produce and Sahaja Seeds is working on uh, um, the seeds production and uh, marketing of uh, desi seeds. Uh, it's the first of its kind in the country. And Sahaja Media is the publication and awareness programs to the farmers and the consumers. Next slide. So this is what we are uh, keeping in mind, like uh, premium price to the farmers. The benefit to the farmers is the premium price and uh, other benefits uh, and safe food to the consumers at affordable price. So this we have to be balanced with the consumers and the farmers. So in between the organization has to be sustained. So that's how we are uh, working on the model. So next slide. So this is a story actually. So before we are starting the producer company, these individual farmers, they were growing paddy and other millets and all. So they were struggling to market the produce. So because they are in the villages and far away places from the city. So they used to get the um, orders from small retail outlets for 50 kg, 100 kg and all. So they are growing in a bigger way. Like it's like maybe a two ton, three ton like that. They were not able to sell it at a one, one slot. So like then uh, they were struggling and if they sent, uh, the, sent it through the uh, couriers or in the transports, they were struggling to get the money from the even the retailers. So that was the, uh, the difficult time they were facing. And then once we started this company, so now company is buying uh, as soon as they harvest and the problem is solved. And uh, so we are giving a premium and also uh, we are paying on time. So next slide. So, and also we created uh, commodity wise uh, groups. Like this is one of the model uh, is the uh, vegetable growers groups. So we have vegetable growers group, rice growers group, millet growers groups, like commodity wise, we created the groups and groups is the shareholders. The model is something different. Like some of the individual farmers also shareholders and also group has become shareholder in our company. So these groups, they are doing the primary activity in the villages. And then they are uh, coordinating between the company and the farmers and they are taking care of some quality aspects and uh, segregation, everything in the group activity. And then they'll send it to the producer company. So this is how uh, the, we created individual farmers and also the uh, groups to, to work in a ground level. So next slide. So this is what the farmers are getting. Like, uh, as I said, uh, the premium price we are giving it as uh, based on the market, we are giving 20% uh, premium uh, for the farmers and also withheld price distribution. So whatever the profit we are making out of this business, uh, so we are giving it uh, as a withheld price uh, uh, from last uh, few years because we we were, we faced the losses in the beginning stage and once we started making profit, uh, so till today we are distributing profit back to the farmers in a way of withheld price. And dividend, dividend still we need to be issue uh, because the uh, it's very less capital we convinced to the farmers and uh, so we have to start issuing the dividend uh, in a subsequent years. So next slide. 
So certification aspects, because it's an organic certification, so we have with IMO control and uh, so we certified uh, as per the standards of NVOP and also we are uh, going to be uh, get the NVOP soon. So the all the certification process for all our farmers, we have a traceability system also for uh, certification uh, for the groups and also for the individuals. So we are working on the certification uh, so for all our farmers. So next slide. So this is what we are supplying to more than 650 uh, outlets uh, uh, in across the 18 states. Uh, so, and also for the uh, bulk buyers like uh, Namdari and other uh, brands. So what we are giving is organic and desi foods we are giving and quality assurance because the small farmers, the, so we have to be collected from the farmers and then we have to care, take care of the quality uh, before giving it to the consumers and safe, tasty and nutrition values the products are there and traceability. So we have a traceability system in place to identify which farmer is growing and uh, so whom we are supplying. And uh, obviously we have to compete in the prices uh, in the market. So that's what we are doing. So next slide. So this is what already Krishna Prasad sir has explained. Like we have a scented varieties of local uh, varieties of like Gandhasala and uh, some of the other varieties like medicinal values rice. Like uh, we have a rice for medicine for uh, diabetics and also for other uh, uh, Ayurvedic uh, like Navara is for the Ayurvedic purpose and all. So rice for daily use, black rice, red rice and uh, so fine rice. So we have plenty variety of uh, rices, but for the marketing aspects like 20 to 25, so uh, rices we are uh, doing in the market. So next slide. And also we have all the millets. Uh, so we conserved uh, millets and also we have all the finger millet, photo millet, all kind of millets we have. Next slide. And we are doing like red rice poha and uh, sweetness and multi millet uh, and uh, multi grain atta. So value addition also we have with our uh, farmer groups. Next slide. And vegetable, diversified vegetables and uh, uh, native varieties of vegetables we conserved and we are also marketing the uh, of vegetables. Next slide. So like uh, initial stage, we were struggling to market uh, so, and then we started uh, conducting these events like red rice mela, black rice mela and organic vegetable mela. So a lot of events we conducted and then the consumers, uh, they started coming to us and now the people knows about the varieties and the benefits of the traditional varieties. So they are buying it from us. So we have all the kind of like we are into B2B also we have our own mm -hmm. app and uh, so we are supplying to the consumers also. So this is what we uh, conducted yeah. in the initial stage to create awareness to the consumers uh, on organic products and traditional varieties. So next slide. And uniqueness of this calendar every year we are uh, uh, releasing with the support of NABAT. So like uh, so like millet calendar, rice varieties calendar, and roots and tubers and forgotten food calendars. So calendar contains the variety uh, about the brief introduction about the variety and like I said, it's a recipe of uh, each and every varieties. So this calendar, so we are giving it to consumers and uh, they are not uh, like throw it out after the one year, like they are keeping it as like a book for reference to the cooking and other things. Next, next slide. So this is how our turnover, like 2010-11, we did 19 lakhs in the first year. And uh, we were uh, struggled a lot in the initial stage. Like, uh, so we were getting the material from the farmers. And so we don't know how to uh, store the products. So because it's uh, organic, it's going to be spoiled very early and uh, pest attack and other things. So we lost it, uh, a lot of the products. Uh, so uh, 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 in the warehouse itself. And also uh, there were no awareness, more awareness at that time. And uh, there were no more stores in the 2010, 11, 12. So we uh, we we did uh, uh, almost uh, like uh, so second year fifty two and third year eighty three. Uh, so still three years uh, we were in a loss. Like for 2011 12 we got the loan from NABAD under uh, uh, UPNRM program, uh, but we were not able to achieve the target, and then uh, it goes to loss again. And third year also we made loss, a accumulated loss up to uh, fifteen to sixteen lakhs. And third fourth year we did a break even. Uh, year break even 
and fourth uh, fifth year uh, we did uh, uh, like the uh, company made a profit and uh, we recovered all the losses and then afterwards uh, we made profit at profits and uh, we are uh, paying back as a withheld price uh, distributing the profit back to the farmers so last year we did 12.55 cr hmm. next slide Okay. So this is what uh, one and a half years back we uh, created one model store. Uh, it is uh, successfully it is running in Bangalore. So we are having a planning to go with franchise model of uh, establishing the retail outlets uh, in uh, Bangalore and other cities. So this is what uh, we did uh, for the retail shops, and also we are launching our own app to market directly to the consumers. Next slide. So we did the experiment of one consignment to Oman in 2019. Uh, so, but uh, we were not having a sufficient infrastructure at that time. So now we created the good infrastructure. Uh, so with the support of NAPIS on loan and all. So we are uh, uh, now we are more focusing on the export also. Next slide. So maybe about a minute more. Two, three uh, slides are there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, minute, so yeah. this is a uh, uh, visitors from the German par parliamentarians to uh, have a. Uh, uh, like model uh, study with the uh, company. Next slide. So this is the biggest appreciation from the Prime Minister in the Monkey Bath. He appreciated our work. So in the Monkey Bath uh, in 2018. So next slide. So this is support uh, by uh, NABARD as given under the uh, UPNRM project. And then uh, now we got the loan from NAPKISAN, uh, 99 lakhs of uh, loan for the term loan and also for the working capital of 75 lakhs. And Silco Foundation is helping us for uh, cold storage and cold chain. Uh, so, so they provided uh, certain metric ton of uh, solar and cold storage. And GIZ is helping us for uh, creating an international market like exposure in the biofac and other connections in the international. Next slide. So this is what the challenges we faced actually, low capital investment from the farmers. This is really uh, uh, like uh, we can't be able to plan it according to the demand also. So sometimes like access to SLC and uh, timely finance from uh, for term loan and working capital loan. Now at least we can able to access with NAPKISAN and other financial institutions and banks. But earlier in the beginning stage, even if we are go to the bankers and the bankers, they are not able to understand what FPC is at all. So now at least we can able to access, but in the initial stage, we struggled a lot. So, and also infrastructure. So no proper infrastructure earlier. So now slowly we are building the infrastructure and uh, quality issues from small farmers. So we have no cleaning and grading facilities. So that is like, uh, so we have to be have a, a facility for uh, this to give it to the consumers. And unhealthy competitors, like <sighs> for organic nowadays, it is a very, very, very unhealthy competition is in the market. Yeah. So that we, it is really struggling us to market the producers and compete with the prices uh, with the unhealthy competition. So next slide. So we won the uh, Jaivik Award 2022, first award. Uh, so we won it. So this is the pictures of that award. Yes, so Swamiji, can we wrap up? Because I think yeah, other... thank you. Yeah. Last, last time is thank you. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you. Swamiji, uh, for a detailed presentation on how from a very small struggling uh, entity, you are now in a situation where uh, you are able to have a large turnover and also pass on the benefits back to the farmer. Uh, the benefit of premium product selling in niche markets and then the price difference is getting back to farmers. It's a fascinating story. Certainly, there will be questions that we will deal with later. Um, it's not every day that we come across uh, a woman-led FPO uh, where uh, the prime minister wants to have a chat. So, Yashaswini Agro Producer Company is a uh, uh, ki FPO. Hai. Anita Ji Yogesh Malage. She is the chairperson. ये जो हमारे सामने आई है कि अपना जो एपीओ में काम कैसे चल रहा है ये मेंबर्स को कैसे मोटिवेट करके अलग-अलग लाइवलीहुड ऑप्शंस में लेके जा रही है तो ये एपीओ का इतना अवार्ड्स मिला है कि ये बहुत नंबर है इनका तो ये आपने ये जो यशस्विनी एग्रो प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी के बारे में बात करने के लिए मैं इनवाइट करता हूं अनीता जी को प्लीज अनीता जी नमस्कार सर जी नमस्कार थोड़ा कैमरा का प्रॉब्लम जरा आ रही है सर कैमरा नहीं ऑन हो रहा है नो नो प्रॉब्लम आपका प्रेजेंटेशन विजिबल है आप बोलिए नो प्रॉब्लम या 
सर मैं हिंदी मराठी और इंग्लिश तीनों में बात करना चाहती हूँ जो कंफर्टेबल है उसमें बोलिए जो आपको ठीक लग रहा है ऐसे करिए ठीक ओके सर नमस्कार सभी को शुरू से मैं नाबार्ड के अपने कृष्णन सर और सभी नाबार्ड के टीम और वाटर का सभी टीम को मैं धन्यवाद देती हूँ और मैं अनिता माड़गे बोरामणि से बोरामणि सोलापुर से बोल रही हूँ यशस्विनी एग्रो प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी ये कंपनी महाराष्ट्र में से फर्स्ट वुमन फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी है और कंपनी के टोटल 1400 सौ वुमन मेंबर शेयर होल्डर है और कंपनी 32 विलेज में काम करते है अभी और कंपनी का इस साल का टर्न ओवर चार करोड़ ट्वेंटी फाइव लाख है और कंपनी का मेजर क्रॉप तूर जवार और चना और अदर विजिटेबल एंड पल्सेस एंड फ्रूट्स में काम करती है और शुरू से कैसा कि दस महिलाओं ने इकट्ठा होकर सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप हमने बनाया है और वो ग्रुप बनाकर आत्मा के माध्यम से 95 ग्रुप हमने बनाया और वो ग्रुप का रूपांतर कंपनी में किया 2015 में जब एम का प्रोजेक्ट आया था महाराष्ट्र में तब हम अपना कंपनी का सिलेक्शन हुआ और वो चार साल 2015 में यशस्विनी कंपनी हमने बनाए है और बहुत सारी दिक्कतें आई है क्योंकि कैसा कि रूरल एरिया में काम करना बहुत मुश्किल है और महिलाओं कभी बाहर भी नहीं निकालते थे और हमारा बोरामणि गांव ऐसा है कि वहां का वो आसपास का जो एरिया है वो बहुत ही डेंजरस एरिया है महिलाओं को काम करना बहुत मुश्किल है तब भी हम एक चैलेंज लेकर महिलाओं के साथ काम करना तय किया और उस वास्ते हम शुरू से बोरामणि से काम स्टार्ट किए हमारे यहाँ मेजर क्रॉप तूर पर प्रोसेसिंग करना हमने तय किया उस माध्यम से क्लीनिंग ग्रेडिंग यूनिट और डाल मिल का मशीन बनाया है और इसी प्रकार आसपास के जो फार्मर लोग हैं उनका सभी इकट्ठा होकर मीटिंग लेकर वो सभी महिलाओं को जाकर एस एस जी एस एस जी के बारे में और शासकीय डिवीजन का जो शासकीय सॉरी गवर्नमेंट जो स्कीम है वो स्कीम के बारे में उनको बढ़ावा दिया और वो स्कीम का कन्वर्जन हम रूरल एरिया में किया जैसे कि गवर्नमेंट स्कीम के माध्यम से जलयुक्त शिवार अभियान एम आर जी एस फलबाग लागवड योजना पी एम एफ एम ये योजना है और बाकी अदर एक्टिविटी में काम कंपनी के माध्यम से Uh, हर एक वन uh, फार्मर को सेवन लाख का कन्वर्जन uh, करके हमने एफ के माध्यम से दिए इसलिए किसानों का जो पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव uh, uh, किसानों का जो एफ के uh, तरफ देखने का जो निगेटिविटी है ना वो निगेटिविटी ने वो पॉजिटिव बनाए हैं और इसलिए कंपनी जो एक्टिविटी करते हैं क्लीनिंग ग्रेडिंग यूनिट डाल मिल इनपुट सेंटर है और जलयुक्त शिवार अभियान स्वच्छ भारत अभियान और संत शिरोमणि सावतामणि आठोड़ी बाजार बोल के हम सोलापुर में फायु जगह वीकली बाजार चलाते हैं इसके माध्यम से हमारे जो फार्मर लोगों का खेती को खेती का जो फिजिटेबल और पल्सेस जो है वो फार्मर टू कंज्यूमर डायरेक्टली बेचते हैं हमारे महिला और कंपनी के ब्रांड से बेचते है इसलिए फार्मर लोगों को भी ज्यादा मुनाफा मिला और कंज्यूमर लोगों को भी एक अच्छा क्वालिटी का अच्छा क्वालिटी का पल्सेस और विजिटेबल भी आ, मिल गया इसलिए फार्मर लोग भी बहुत खुश है और हमारी महिला मंथली आठ से आ, दस हजार तक कमाती है और पंद्रह सौ वुमन महिलाओं को हम स्किल डेवलपमेंट ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम दिए उसमें पैकिंग ब्रांडिंग लेबलिंग और प्रोसेसिंग जैसे कि अदर अदर एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी का यूज हम अपने फार्म में कैसे कर सकते हैं ये सभी के माध्यम से 1500 महिलाओं को जब हमने टेक्निकल सपोर्ट और स्किल डेवलपमेंट दिया उसमें 80 परसेंटेज महिला ये खुद के पाव पर खड़ी है इसमें मेजर हमारा प्रॉब्लम ये था कि इकोनॉमिकल स्ट्रांग करना ये महिलाओं के लिए बहुत बड़ी समस्या थी हमारे सामने तब हमने नाबार्ड की नाबार्ड के माध्यम से और विदर्भ कोकण ग्रामीण बैंक के सपोर्ट की वजह से दोनों से मिलाकर 2017 में जॉइंट लाइबिलिटी ग्रुप के माध्यम से हमने अभी तक 800 850 महिलाओं को 
जैसे कि मिल्क प्रोसेसिंग करना और गोट फार्मिंग फ्लावर्स खेती विजिटेबल्स खेती ये सभी अलग अलग एक्टिविटी के हिसाब से फायु महिलाओं का एक ग्रुप बनाया और वन महिलाओं को पचास हजार ऐसे करके हम अढ़ाई लाख का पांच महिलाओं में अढ़ाई लाख का लोन दिया अभी तक 2017 से अभी तक टोटली 1560 उमन महिलाओं को बाईस करोड़ का लोन हमने डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन किया अभी तक और अच्छा आ, अच्छा तरीके से कंपनी का काम भी शुरू है और नाबार्ड ने ये सभी हमारा वर्क देखकर 2019 में नाबार्ड के पॉपी बोल के हमारा कंपनी का सिलेक्शन किया और अभी हम सोलापुर जिले के नाबार्ड के पॉपी बोल के काम करते हैं और टोटली फोर ब्लॉक में हमने पांच एफ प्रमोट किए हैं और वो एफ बनाना और पोम ग्रेनेट फिजिटेबल प्रोसेसिंग और फ्रूट प्रोसेसिंग में अभी काम करना करने का बिजनेस प्लान पूरा फाइनल हो गया है और हर एक कंपनियों का 800 से आठ या आठ मेंबर है और उनका टर्नओवर भी अभी थर्टी लाख थर्टी फाइव लाख फिफ्टी लाख ऐसा टर्नओवर भी हुआ है और अभी वो गवर्नमेंट का जो स्मार्ट योजना है वो स्मार्ट योजना भी अपना यशस्विनी कंपनी का सिलेक्ट हो गया वन करोड़ का उसे उसमें हम मिलेट में काम कर आ, करते हैं और कैसा है कि सोलापुर का मंगलवेड़ा जवार बोल के है वो जवार को जी आई मानांकन मिला है इस वजह से जवार पर प्रोसेसिंग का काम हमने अभी शुरू किया है और 25 प्रोडक्ट हम जवार के बनाते हैं और कंपनी के प्रोडक्ट 55 प्रोडक्ट है उसमें सभी प्रकार के पिकल्स है और सभी प्रकार के पल्सेस और सभी प्रकार के पापड़ अचार और अलग अलग शेवया और जवार के बिस्किट कुकीज और जवार के शेवया पापड़ ये सभी प्रकार के प्रोडक्ट हम बनाते हैं अभी और ये प्रोडक्ट कंपनी के ब्रांड से बनाकर फार्मर टू कंज्यूमर और कृषि सम्मेलन और सांगली कोल्हापुर हैदराबाद और मुंबई और पुणा इस जगह पर हमारा माल जाता है और जो वहां के जो ऑर्डर आते हैं 200 किलो 500 किलो हजार किलो ऐसे हम ऑर्डर आने के बाद उनको कुरियर करके भेजते हैं और बाकी वेजिटेबल में भी काम अपना ज्यादा है वेजिटेबल डेली 25 टन वेजिटेबल हमारा कैसा हैदराबाद और वाशी मार्केट को हम बेचते हैं अभी गए साल हमारा रिलायंस रिटेल कंपनी के साथ एग्रीमेंट हुआ और ये स्मार्ट प्रोजेक्ट की वजह से रिलायंस रिटेल कंपनी का एग्रीमेंट हुआ और आपने जो नाबार्ड पॉपी के माध्यम से फाइव एफ हमने जो बनाया है उस फाइव एफ में से तीन एफ का स्मार्ट प्रोजेक्ट में सिलेक्शन हुआ और मैग्नेट प्रोजेक्ट जो है मैग्नेट प्रोजेक्ट में भी हमने फाइव एफ का डीपीआर बनाकर दिए है और अभी यशस्विनी कंपनी के माध्यम से सेवन करोड़ प्रोजेक्ट हमने बनाकर मैग्नेट ऑफिस को सुपुर्द किए हैं और आगे जाकर महिलाओं का इतना है कि अभी दिल्ली को भी गली से लेकर दिल्ली तक महिलाओं का काम बहुत अच्छे तरीके से हम कंपनी के माध्यम से अभी कर रहे हैं और ये काम देखने के लिए मेक्सिको की टीम दो बार बोरामणि को आकर गई और हमारे सभी महिलाओं का जो काम है वो सभी काम का बहुत सारी खुशियां दी उनको बहुत सारी बधाई दिया है और गए छह महीने के अवल जब हैदराबाद मिलेट एग्जीबिशन था वहां आई के माध्यम से महाराष्ट्र में से यशस्विनी कंपनी का सिलेक्ट हुआ वहां केंद्रीय मंत्री तोमर साहब ने खुद जवार प्रोडक्ट का टेस्ट लिया और उन्होंने भी बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं कंपनी को दिए और गए मंथ में रायचूर में मिलेट एग्जीबिशन था तब अपने देश में देश के अर्थ मंत्री सीतारामन मैडम ने वो भी अपने जवार के प्रोडक्ट का टेस्ट लिए और उन्होंने भी अपने कंपनी को बहुत सारी बधाई दे ऐसे करके कंपनी के माध्यम से अभी 2015 से अभी तक काम शुरू है, है और ऐसे आत्मा और कृषि विभाग नाबार्ड कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र और पलन डिवीजन ये सभी गवर्नमेंट की जो एजेंसी है वो एजेंसी के माध्यम से फार्मर लोगों का जो आय दुगना करना है इस वजह से उनके माध्यम से टेक्निकल सपोर्ट लेकर कंपनी अच्छा तरीके से काम कर रही है 
और वुमन एम्पावरमेंट और रूरल डेवलपमेंट एंटरप्रेनरशिप ये सभी के बारे में कंपनी के माध्यम से काम इंडिविजुअल्स लेकर बहुत अच्छे तरीके से चालू है क्योंकि अवेयरनेस टू रूरल वुमन अबाउट ऑल गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स रूरल पब्लिक अबाउट स्वच्छ भारत अभियान रूरल एरिया अवेयरनेस अबाउट एंटरप्रेनरशिप टू रूरल वुमन एंड प्रमोटिंग टू जॉब इन वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ स्मॉल स्किल डेवलपमेंट एंड अवेयरनेस टू रूरल पब्लिक अबाउट टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एंड वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग फॉर कैरियर बिल्ड एंड रूरल वुमन अबाउट हेल्थ केयर अबाउट इको फ्रेंडली एंड नेचर कन्वर्जेशन ये सभी के माध्यम से कंपनी का अच्छा तरीके से काम शुरू है और इस वजह से मिलेट महिला जो है मिलेट के माध्यम से अभी हमारे महिला उसमें थर्टी फाइव महिला सॉरी थ्री हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव महिला इस मिलेट प्रोजेक्ट में एंगेज है और लगभग फोर हंड्रेड महिला कंपनी के अंडर काम करती है हर एक गांव में लगभग ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी महिला ऐसे अपने अपने स्किल पर काम करते हैं उनको सभी टेक्निकल सपोर्ट और बाकी मार्केटिंग का सपोर्ट प्रोडक्शन का सपोर्ट ये सभी कंपनी करती है क्योंकि हिंदी में आज पहली बार बोल रही हूँ सर इनोवेटिव प्रोग्राम में हमने कंपनी के माध्यम से फार्मर आर मोटिवेटेड फॉर डूइंग ग्रुप फार्मिंग अवेयरनेस अबाउट ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ केमिकल फर्टिलाइजर और वेजिटेबल एंड एग्रो प्रोडक्ट हैज सप्लाइड बाय फार्मर टू कंज्यूमर डायरेक्टली एंड बिल्ड ऑफ शीट तले एंड बंद हेयर इंस्टेड ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल वेल अंडर इरिगेशन वर्क एरिया ग्रुप फॉरनर विजिट टू टाइम्स इसलिए आउटस्टैंडिंग में मैं बोलती हूँ कि द फर्स्ट लेडी फ्रॉम सोलापुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट हु हैज सिलेक्टेड इन वीसी विथ आवर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर माननीय श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी उनके साथ बात करने में लगभग दो मिनट का टाइम मुझे दिए थे क्योंकि बीस मिनट कब गए मुझे भी नहीं पता चला क्योंकि मोदी साहब ने सभी कंपनी के बारे में डिटेल में मेरे साथ बात की और उन्होंने यशस्विनी कंपनी को भी बधाई दी और सोलापुर जिले में ऐसे सभी फार्मर लोगों को भी बधाई दे और अच्छा तरीके से काम चल रहा है ऐसा काम असच काम म्हणजे तुम्ही सुरू ठेवा अशा पद्धतीनं त्यांनी चांगल्या पद्धतीनं शुभकामना दिल्या आणि मी हिंदी मराठी इंग्लिश या तिन्ही विषयामधून मी बोलते आणि आज खरोखरच नाबार्ड आणि वॉटरच्या माध्यमातून मी मनापासून आभार मानते त्यांनी मला बोलण्याची संधी दिली आणि आज नाबार्डच्या माध्यमातून गल्लीतील महिलाची ओळख थेट दिल्ली पर्यंत पोहोचली हे खरोखरच कौतुकास्पद आहे आणि एकत्र येणं ही सुरुवात असते एकत्र विचार करणं यात प्रगती असते आणि एकत्र मिळून काम करणं यातच यशाचं गमक असते थँक्यू सर थँक्यू बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अनिताजी ये तो आपने विभिन्न कार्यक्रमों में जुड़े हुए हैं वो भी कंपनी का अंदर इतने अलग अलग प्रोडक्ट्स में आप आपने मेंबर्स को सलाह दी है उनका एंटरप्राइज बढ़ाने के लिए बहुत सारे सलाह भी दिए है ये तो बहुत ही अच्छा अचीवमेंट है तो इसलिए तो प्राइम मिनिस्टर आपसे बीस मिनट बात करते हैं ना तो जब हमारा काम बोलता है प्राइम मिनिस्टर या अनिता जी नहीं बोलते है अपना काम के ऊपर ये बातचीत हो रही है बहुत ही अच्छा लगा आपकी जो पूरा जो हिस्ट्री सुन करके बाद में जब सवाल की टाइम आएगी तो आपके पास आ जाएंगे नाउ वी स्विच टू दी व्हाट डू यू कॉल क्वेश्चन आवर बिफोर दैट आई इंट्रोड्यूस टू मोर पैनलिस्ट इनटू दिस डिस्कशन दिस टू पीपल आर नॉट फ्रॉम एफ पी ओस वन इज वी कॉल मेकिंग एफ पी ओस कम अबाउट they try and bring apos into existence and put them through initial phases provide them training build capacities do hand holding this is vritti um, uh, an entity which is under the catalyst group based out of bangalore but vritti is active all over the country and um, they have been uh, instrumental in setting up several apos and um, balakrishnan who is the ceo here he has been with um, uh, he has about 20 years of experience in working with marginalized vulnerable section especially trying to look at what kind of market based options exist for them to increase their income and wealth and uh, a number of livelihood transformation models he has worked with and vritti as a group has worked with more than uh, i think 150 or so fpos maybe bala could tell us slightly later about 
uh, what is the what do you call length and depth of experience i i particularly remember the attempt made by them in i think uh, chatisgarh uh, for converting the sita fall into um, the custard apple pulp and then marketing it in cartons the first of its kind this was done about 5 6 years back and it, it did fairly well so the, that is the kind of innovation that vritti group brings in the other person is uh, a money man but with lot of lot of empathy for uh, the fpos and the farmers this is sridhar iswaran who is the head of samunati foundation which works with the fpos as you saw earlier in uh, mares presentation uh, maybe samunati has the largest number of fpos finance in the country and their last year i think exposure was more than about 50% of the total exposure from all nbfcs we are not taking banks into account in this and um, sridhar has a past experience with corporate sector he has worked with hdfc bank he has worked with price water of scoopers but then he thought he should do something that's more interesting looking at how farmers can be made pro- more profitable and how farmer producer organizations can become much more effective so that they deliver value to farmers so i welcome both of you to the panel uh, now i am going to ask uh, but you start with some questions it is going to be a mix of what has already been asked by the um, what do you call participant quite a number of them are there uh, i i will first to start with uh, my request to panelists is be very brief about the answers because there are a number of questions out there so we try and uh, provide brief answers and uh, the participants who have asked the questions uh, they could always get back to you to continue on that answer and then expand later offline um the very first uh, what do you call question i it comes from prachi saroj this is to vilas ji in fy15 what is it that you did as business because there is a huge spike in your growth whether it is profits or in turnover vilas ji can you be very specific about what was the magic in the year 2015 ending march 2015 in the uh, first uh, four years period uh, our uh, focus was on uh, grape um, uh, ecosystem development in 2015 actually the our first the the pack house uh, was uh, started and that has impacted on the overall uh, performance of the organization the infrastructure creation uh, ipo on or uh, infrastructure that has actually uh, created the change in 2015 on the um, top line and also on the bottom line side Okay. Um, you see, arising from this, and also the um, presentation made both by uh, um, Sahaj as also Sahyadri, um, they not only promote uh, the activities in the FPO, the farming concepts, and also the higher level processing marketing concepts. try and ensure that uh, the natural resources are around they are dealt with with greater sensitivity um, so bala i would just get to you with your experience of working with so many fpos uh, and fpo which works well uh, can it also promote resilience of livelihoods from say a sustainability point of view yeah um no uh, one is i think the resilience which can be maybe defined in um, multiple things when we work with farmers it can be are we looking at land resilience or are we looking at the farmer their family resilience yeah uh, if you look at the the land and the farmer family resilience i think definitely it's possible um uh, one is um i think how do we work we know that every rural family also diversify their income sources to be resilient because that's how uh, their risk getting di- uh, what do you call uh, diversify similarly when we come with because we are talking about fpo then how the fpo can actually bring that resilience for every farming family it is about not only looking at the crop um, i think which when we look at crop because today's world i think we are seeing it several uh, issues and challenges which is climate change related or the market fluctuation uh, the many things it can actually hit then there is a roadblock for our farmers because then the income watch it's not predictable for them can we look at something which is predictable which is i think which is in the dairy sector it's been proven 
where at least we know that if they have two cows, then minimum there is income has been assured for our farmers, yeah, uh, their families. Then how do the each FPO based on the local context can we look at and promote which is allied activities, which can actually give them some predictable income to the farmer and farmer families. That is, I think, which we are looking at it. Every farming families should have minimum of two, three diversified income sources that is actually provided through the producer collective. I think it is possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sridhar, I turn to you. Um, the way um, uh, Bala framed his answer, he said one is about uh, resilience in uh, the context of incomes and uh, the livelihood itself. The other comes on the farming practices, the natural resource use, water use optimization and things like that. Looking to how uh, you have dealt with FPOs, both on the financing and the non-financing side. Uh, uh, an FPO, does it automatically guarantee that members will get access to higher income levels? Because there is a follow-up question to some of the other panelists based on this. Uh, so how do you look at it? Meaning, we have formed an FPO. Um, I, by its very nature, it is going to offer some kind of an income increase, which makes for resilience in an economic sense. Uh, thanks, Srinivasan, sir, and uh, thanks to uh, Ekobari and uh, Water for this opportunity. Uh, at Samunati, uh, the way we have seen, uh, I will add on to what uh, Bala has already done in terms of the resilience in the land and the thing. Uh, one of the things uh, we have looked at at the FPO is, you know, the entire business plan, what the FPO is done on only one crop, one supply chain, taking into account. And if something goes wrong, they are not able to actually provide all the services and, you know, the income in the hands of the farmer. So when Samunati started interacting with them, that's where we said, you know, your entire value chain approach should be taking into account multiple crops which is grown in that area and also by your member farmers. So that is one of the important things that we have to look at it. And we support them by, you know, preparing that business plan. And also as an alternative, so because every crop cycle is, you know, three to four months, right? And uh, there is enough time and bandwidth available for the FPO. So we encourage FPO, why can't you get into a livelihood activity which can be dairy? You know, because FPO has got average 500 to 1,000 members and we take a 50% ratio, at least 200 to 250 will have one cattle. If FPO can get into a milk aggregation model, right, and that can be a daily source of income for them and it also leads into a activity and they can get a job which can be given to the local villages doing the entire aggregation model and all. So that way, we, at Samunati, we do a lot of advisory work to the FPOs where we tell them, along with your normal thing, what you are already doing, which you are good at. But, you know, on a longer scale, not everybody able to do uh, the way uh, other FPOs are getting into value addition, processing and all. But at least you can start with an activity which you all are aware. That way, some income can be sustainable. And one of the services which your member farmers expect is also, you know, apart from the inputs and procurement, can you also help us with a lot of other things? So that way we are telling them. One more thing I wanted to add, sir. Apart from that, because there is a strong social capital which is built between the member farmers and the FPO, there are a lot of other safety nets or a insurance or some of the other opportunities which the FPO can take it to the member farmers. So that way the social capital is strongly built. So Samunati does this through a lot of advisory work and institutional capacity building, sir. Thank you, Sridhar. Uh, I'll now turn to Krishnaji. Um, you had said earlier in your presentation somewhere between you and Somesh that uh, you have a system of a distribution of withheld price. Uh, so I think quite a number of the participants would like to understand how this actually works. And actually, how do you fix the base procurement price when you buy first time? And whether the farmer members understand the concept of withheld price, which of course is uh, quite prevalent in sugar, but coming to organic farming, this seems to be a new idea. Would you like to throw some light on that? Yeah. yeah. Somesh, can you explain? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, uh, like, uh, see, when we are uh, procuring from the farmers, we are uh, like fixing the premium price based on the local market. 
or sometimes it is like uh, uh, seen in Karnataka for vegetables, Hopkins is their government body. So we are taking that as a benchmark and we are giving a premium price for the vegetable growers. So at the end of the year, uh, so based on their supply, how much they are producing and supplying to the company. So based on that, and also the looking into the profit, so we are going to be decide, the board is going to be decide how much percentage we can able to give it as a withheld price. So it is added into the uh, procurement cost and uh, will uh, give back to the individual farmers and also the farmer groups. Uh, so based on their uh, value of supply, maybe 3% or 5%, uh, this is the practice we are having and giving back as a withheld price. Okay, okay. Thank you. Meaning the um, surplus in price that you gain from the market, you try and distribute it back to a certain extent to those who supply it. Uh, that is proportional to the quantity they supplied. Agar kisi ne do quintal diya, wo do quintal ka x rupees per quintal jayega when you calculate the percentage. Agar koi panch quintal diya, this is what we call the patronage in other words, but you are linking it to the price. Okay. Uh, Anita ji, aapke liye ek sawal aya hai, Ishwar Kale ji se. इनको इन पहले तो आपको बहुत बधाई दिए हैं दूसरा इनका सवाल है कि ये जो फार्मर लैंड ओनरशिप जो जमीन का जो कागजात जो है क्या अपना महिला मेंबर का नाम पे होता है अभी या कैसा है अब इसके बारे में क्या कुछ कार्रवाई किया है शुरू में कैसा है सर 2015 में जब हम कंपनी के तब महिलाओं के नाम पर 35% महिलाओं के नाम पर खेती थी और अभी एक कंपनी का पूरा सेवन साल होने के बाद अभी लगभग 85 परसेंटेज महिलाओं के नाम पर हमने उन महिलाओं का नाम सात बारह उतारे पर चढ़ा दिए गए हैं क्योंकि कैसा है इसमें हमारे कलेक्टर साहब जी ने भी बहुत सारी हमको सपोर्ट किए और बाकी कृषि डिवीजन के अधिकारी जो है वो भी उनको वो भी हम सभी फार्मर लोगों को बहुत सारे सपोर्ट किए है और अभी आ, अभी कैसा है कि वो सात बारह जो उतारा है वो नहीं तो भी कृषि सहायक का जो अपने महिलाओं के नाम पर रहना तो कंपलसरी है और अभी जो तहसीलदार रहते हैं ना उनका जो लेटर रहता है सर क्योंकि वो फार्मर होने का जो लेटर का फॉर्मेट है वो फॉर्मेट देने के बाद भी कंपनी में इन्वॉल्व हो सकते है क्योंकि डायरेक्टर बोल के नहीं वो शेयर होल्डर बोल के इन्वॉल्व हो सकते सर अच्छा अच्छा थैंक यू जी ये आई हैव अनदर क्वेश्चन हियर फ्रॉम संदीप लोया आई थिंक फिदर आई विल फर्स्ट पुट इट टू यू एंड आई विल आस्क लेटर ऑन मरे टू टेस्ट योर आंसर द क्वेश्चन इज लेट मी सी वेयर इज दिस क्वेश्चन गोन नाउ How, how do you manage to what do you call raise equity uh, uh, than uh, the other kinds of working capital and term loans if you are an fpc uh, is it uh, available in a realistic manner to, this was the what do you call import of the question uh, so how do you see the market for loans and then even capital by fpcs and uh, what has been your experience is everyone able to get what they want uh, okay the answer is uh, sir it is not that easy it's very difficult mm. because uh, if you see the initial presentation by mari sir also mm. out of the total fpos got promoted mm. even if you take a percentage there are 15 to 20% of the fpos which are active that's only because you know uh, once the handholding support is gone the fpos are not able to scale mm. the reason being again you know the lack of business acumen and the risk taking ability is not there Hmm. So definitely, uh, many of the bankers and other financial institutions, when they look at, they look at the track record of three years of financial statements and all, rather than looking at what the FPO is into, what activities that they do. Hmm. So that's the reason a straight through, you know, uh, uh, templated thing it doesn't work over here. So you need to be really understanding the FPO activities and might be you start with a low scale with them. That's what Samuniti does uh, when we engage with the FPOs. Uh, definitely we understand their challenges we also understand in terms of the other financial which are little bit weak in the initial stages so we support them with a small loan amount so that they can start with an activity so mm. over a period of time once they are able to build a small business uh, then you know they can able to churn uh, the money two three times 
and we can see the turnover is increasing and they are able to make little bit of profit and that is a confidence gets built up and slowly you increase the exposure now success story is a, sir what we can tell at samunati is we have been doing this in the last 4 years and that is what resulted in be able to get lot of other institutions to the fpos like from a co lending perspective we have also because of the track record of the fpos with samunati many of the other banks have lent to the samunati on their own uh, that's what is the benefit as but initial stages are very difficult for any fpos to raise capital and you know that's where uh, you need to really focus on their activity and the business plan and the alignment is very very important over here so that's what all i will say sir and when it comes to the sp to raise equity uh, that's a little longer run you know a uh, organizations like uh, sayadri or some of the uh, success stories which are there today discuss they will be able to really go up to the investors and raise some capital because they have a excellent track record with a good uh, um, uh, turnover profit being generated and the entire ecosystem connectivity is a good story so mm -hmm. people get interested but for a nascent fpos at least 3 to 4 years is become difficult mm -hmm. so nbfc is like us we support them in the initial phases so that you know they become little bit sustainable and viable at a longer run to raise more capital yeah. thanks mare what about uh, how do you see this especially you are specializing in certain types of what do you call working cap not working capital finance support so how, how do you look at uh, access to finance for fpos yeah uh, i think uh, we realized that building the fpo would be at the cost of the farmer so that is the trade off that is an issue and therefore we look at gross profits or gross margins in the business that they are doing if those are there basically if it's retained with the fpo or not doesn't really matter to us and that could be one basis of funding it mm -hmm. so not using the conventional debt equity ratio mm -hmm. is a way and then guarantees to an extent are uh, equity uh, proxies mm -hmm. in a sense so that way we should actually leverage a guarantee to increase the exposure to the fpo depending on the business and in both these we see the market linkage so how good is the party on the other side who is buying what is their reputation uh, that would form the basis of taking a call on how much exposure we would give for uh, working capital okay okay um vilas ji i will now turn to you again um there there are a couple of observations from uh, ugandar um ugandar bandavkar um the one of the larger questions in substance was how do you manage to ensure that your farmers are sensitive to the environment in which uh, they actually do farming and are able to ensure um, resilience more in the context of climate meaning the first question we started with but i found that there is a fairly large question coming from gandhar so how do you manage because you have got uh, such a number of fpcs already formed on the ground some are crop wise some are zone wise so any central messaging in relation to what would be a fair uh, what do you call practice which is environmentally friendly and which also ensure food safety in the hands of the customer so how does this happen in terms of farm practice once the company says these are our principles uh see at sayadri from the beginning uh, we were very clear about our uh, uh, understanding of ecosystem that we have to create value for every stakeholder and then only that uh, ecosystem will uh, grow and uh, because of the europe market connection from the beginning um there was a um, uh, pressure from the supermarket from the our customer side also that all the practices as a farmer uh, what we are doing uh, that should be in a sustainable way we have to follow the good agriculture practices that is a mandatory condition if you want to crack the market so at sayadri from the beginning um, uh, we focus on all this uh, good agriculture practices at every farm so the maintaining all the resourcing efficient manner in sustainable way whether it is our water whether it is our soil so that is a common practice at uh, all the farms 
and uh, that is now uh, replicated in other crops also along with grapes other uh, horticulture crops uh, everywhere uh, we are following the same principle good agriculture practices if you see we are certified with almost 22 different certification programs in that we are uh, we are having global gap certification iso 22000 we are certified with uh, rainforest alliance we are certified with uh, um, uh, all the ethical uh, audits like uh, smeta then uh, also um, fair trade practices so that is a um, uh, dna of the organization yeah. that we have to follow all the sustainable practice set at farm level at uh, post service level and at also at marketing level and because of that only sayadri is continuously growing yeah. because of uh, that uh, we are uh, getting a new customer base in uh, domestic market and also in international market sure i think breaking the european market is not easy unless all the protocols are fully followed uh, i now turn to bala uh, you see oh. abhay singh ji asked a question um you have got a few questions i am going to put one in particular to you um, say when you are dealing with uh, say organic produce how do you actually generate additional value for the produce that your farmer member bring into the fpo since you have been helping um, fpo to go to viable market he says how do you identify the product that will fetch a better price uh, then what is it that you do for value addition in the context of a niche market that you might have identified and uh, yeah how do you decide at what level to market it whether it should be retail wholesale intermediate or you put your own label uh, meaning uh, so some thought process on this based on your experience yeah no one in the marketing aspect i think uh, what we are trying to do it is uh, uh, reaching out in multiple channels um and one i think everyone is looking at it is is about branding uh i think every fpo level is branding is uh, very very difficult and as we all understand i think as you mentioned srinivasan ji also it is like uh, many of the fpos uh, taking one uh, polythene cover and then uh, putting a name it is called branding yeah we all know that it is how difficult and it is not easy to scale up i think we don't believe in that uh but one is we are looking at it largely how do we see the ultimate intention is that how do we uh get maximum consumer pie to back to the farmers or how do we increase the margin for our farmers yeah that is whatever the channel which is basically we are looking at it can we because otherwise also fpo cannot aggregate maximum produce or maximum surplus from the farmers which is available that's where we focus on can you do it in the bulk because nis market it has its own challenges and its own cost involved in it because it is not making viable you know today's e-commerce world it takes easily it's about 40% margin yeah and uh, that it is very difficult to give that margin to the e-commerce player and uh, you can't make that margin at the producer collective level yeah, uh, yeah. we look at it as bulk sales where we are able to also help farmers to sell their produce and how do we unlock the value for the both the players the bulk buyer and also to the producer collective that way that is a maximum which we are trying to do and then slowly build the brand which is not only for one fpo can we bring in the collective of fpos to have the common brand which can actually uh, get into the market yeah that's what we are trying to do so thank bala that's the quite comprehensive what do you call response abhi anita ji to aapke paas main abhi ek sawal puchna chahta hu ye jo hai a वो हमारा जो यशस्विनी जो है अभी जरा जरा सा ये इंक्रीज होते हुए अभी तो चार करोड़ की टर्नओवर में पहुंच गया है लेकिन इस सफर में ये रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग का महत्व क्या था मतलब ये आपके पास तो जो गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज आते हैं बैंकर्स आते हैं कोई एनजीओ आते हैं फिर वो ग्रांट देने वाले आते हैं लेकिन सबसे तो डिमांड ये है कि आपके पास क्या नंबर है आपका अकाउंटिंग सही है आपके पास स्टॉक स्टेटमेंट ठीक है आपका मेंबर लेवल का इंफॉर्मेशन है ये इस सिलसिले में आप आपका क्या क्या कठिनाई आई थी आप इसको कैसे सॉल्व किया है फिर ये रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग क्या है एक ऐसे ही इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है कि इसको सबको ध्यान देना है आ, ये तो सही बात है सर क्योंकि एफ का जब हम काम करते हैं एफ के बारे में पूरा जानकारी हमने ले लिया है सर इसमें कैसे कि शुरू में जब हम एफ बनाया है तब हम नागपुर वनामती में भी पांच दिन का ट्रेनिंग लिया पूरा डायरेक्टर बॉडी और सीईओ कंपनी के 
और रामेती कोल्हापुर को भी ट्रेनिंग हुआ हमारा और पूना में भी हुआ उस ट्रेनिंग में हमको ऐसे सलाह दिए गए कि कंपनी का रिकॉर्ड अच्छा तरीके से रखना कितना मुश्किल बात है और वो रिकॉर्ड अच्छा रहेगा तब अच्छा हम कंपनी का काम अच्छा तरीके से चला पाएंगे इसलिए हमने ट्रेनिंग लेकर सर उसमें रोजगिर्द कैसा रखना चाहिए और कंपनी का सी और सी दोनों का सिलेक्ट हमने किया है सर और कंपनी का जो ये जो मीटिंग है और मंथली डायरेक्टर बॉडी का जो मीटिंग है और वो मीटिंग में क्या क्या जानकारी दिए गए जाते हैं और अदर अदर एक्टिविटी हम कैसे तरीके से ग्राउंड लेवल में इम्प्लीमेंटेशन करना है इसके बारे में जो भी डिस्कशन होते हैं वो सभी जो मिनट्स है वो मिनट्स हम निकाल कर वो मिनट्स बुक बनाए सर वो दिन में मंथली दो बार मीटिंग हो दे या चार बार मीटिंग हो दे वो सभी मीटिंग का टोटली वो मिनट्स बुक में आता है इसलिए आगे जाकर अपने कंपनी का प्लानिंग करना कैसे आ, नुकसान हुआ क्या प्रॉफिट हुआ और अपने कंपनी प्रॉफिट में है क्या नुकसानी में है और आ, हम अपने जो फार्मर शेयर होल्डर है महिला वो महिलाओं को कितना हम डिविडेंड दे सकते हैं ये सभी निकालना ये सभी मिनट्स बुक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है और रोजकिर्द भी है और प्रोसीडिंग बुक बहुत ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है और वाउचर बुक जो भी खर्चा होता है उसका जो रिसीट रहता है वाउचर बुक वो भी हमने मेंटेन किए है और बाकी शेयर होल्डर को जब हम सर्टिफिकेट देते है सर वो सर्टिफिकेट का ओ जो है वो ओ हमारे पास रहता है इसलिए वो सी में कैसे कि अभी हमारे 1400 सौ वुमन महिला शेयर होल्डर है 1400 सौ रिसीट हमारे पास है सर वो रिसीट बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है और कंपनी के जो आर के जो कम्प्लाइंसेस है वो बहुत मेन इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है सर क्योंकि कैसे है कि कंपनी का एजेम मीटिंग और मंथली मीटिंग वो सभी कंपनी का आर में आर के पोर्टल पर अपने को सभी जानकारी देना पड़ता है कंपनी का उसमें एम जी टी सेवन है पास थ्री है और बाकी कंपनी का सितंबर तक एनुअल रिटर्न कब भरना है और ये सभी के जो बारे में है जो जानकारी है वो जानकारी कंपनी को लेना बहुत इतना आसान नहीं है क्योंकि कंपनी कंपनी कौन भी खोल सकते हैं और कंपनी चलाना बहुत मुश्किल बात है क्योंकि एक दिन जर लेट जो हो गया दस हजार का दंड बैठता है सर हाँ फाइन लगता है सर इसलिए कंपनी का जो स्टेटस है वो स्टेटस अच्छा रखना और कंपनी का रिकॉर्ड मेंटेन करना वो बहुत अच्छा तरीके से हम कर लेते हैं और अभी हमारे यहाँ जो विजिटर आते हैं वो विजिटर बुक हमने सेपरेट रखा है वो विजिटर में उनका जो अनुभव जो है वो अनुभव उस उस नोटबुक में वो शेयर करते हैं और उसके हिसाब से उसके रिलेटेड फोटोग्राफ्स वहां हम रखते हैं इसलिए सभी जो एक्टिविटी अभी तक हमने जो इम्प्लीमेंटेशन किया रूरल में वो सभी एक्टिविटी का पूरा जो डॉक्यूमेंटेशन क्लिप रहेगा फोटोग्राफ्स रहेगा उसका जो खर्चा जो बिल है वो बिल का रिसीट वो सभी जो है वो एक्टिव में है और हम अच्छा तरीके से वो रख पा लिए है सर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अनिता जी कैन आई ऐड 30 सेकंड्स टू दिस इफ यू इफ यू ऑलो मी श्रीनिवास सर या या प्लीज 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 सर ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट इंप्रेसिव व्हाट अनिता जी मेंशन बट आई थिंक द मेंबर लेवल डिटेल्स एट द एफपीओ लेवल हैज टू बी स्ट्रेंथ बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड एंगेजिंग विद द एफपीओस द मैक्सिमम इंफॉर्मेशन व्हाट द एफपीओस कैप्चर इज ओनली द नेम ऑफ द फार्मर द विलेज दैट्स इट दे डोंट हैव एनी इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट यू नो व्हाट इज द लैंड एकरेज दे ओन what are the crops they grow what are the types of inputs they buy what is the yield right so if uh, samunuti is facilitating all those to the fpos in a digitization platform so that they are able to prepare a realistic business plan now that they have member records and they also able to connect with the ecosystem players now they have the visibility in terms of how many acres may what crops are growing so at the, when the harvest happens they know which buyers to get connected what is the price negotiations so that's why digitization is an important and that's what we encourage all the fpos to get into more details sir that's okay. what i want thanks so thank thanks sir um i'm going to now change the what do you call um, the format i laid out all the panelists in the beginning because we are now running out of time 
mareji as i told you right in the beginning uh, what are those important things that uh, strike you it is not as if it will be only from this discussion but these discussions also bring very clearly to the fore that even the most three successful example that we heard they still have past challenges current challenges and future challenges nature of challenge changes from what it was to something else uh, so what kind of priorities you think that should be said for epivos to go from where they are to a step higher right um, yes yeah, sahyadri from 750 maybe it goes to 1500 crores and maybe becomes a public limited company of repute we don't know let us see probably becomes the biggest epivo in the entire state of maharashtra whatever so what do you think are those key takeaways that epivo should work on in order to become better so you take some 3 4 minutes on that and yes summarize the discussions uh, a very tall order for me to respond basically so i'll just uh, summarize some observations or general patterns that i noticed one is an anchor person you know who takes on the leadership role in building these institutions is a key thing uh, to the success of these institutions so wherever we see that and that could be either from among the promoting institution or among the farmers but somebody takes charge and leads and builds these institutions so second uh, issue and i think that is going to be the key uh, to what you said is to look beyond seeing this as a producer company or a marketing company so a very integrated approach towards development of the region and the community if that approach is taken that would make these institutions really relevant and sustainable for the area in which they operate and significantly make a difference in the life of people the third i think uh, thread that flows through all the presentations is building on existing work so almost anita ji or even uh, krishna prasad spoke about pre fpo work also they did and how those have woven into this program and then built beyond just an fpo into a sustainable institution that is addressing several issues of the farming community and the rural people folk and that is another thing that i see and uh, ultimately i think success of an fpo is in its ability to negotiate the market so if that capability to negotiate the market doesn't happen in the first 2 to 3 years keeping an institution that like this alive becomes irrelevant in fact it would be better to shut it down and give space for somebody else to try it out rather than artificially keeping these institutions running without clarity of mandate and an executing execution model uh, which they have in hand and uh, on capital what i see is uh, expecting farmers to fund capitalize these companies is is a uh, is not possible in the first place but uh, tier 2 capital of some form has to be provided for and it was very encouraging sometime back when one of the dmds of nabard uh, flagged this as an action point and i thought there would be some movement on that side but uh, if that happens it would really leverage uh growth companies so companies which are on the growth path would be it need not be a free for all kind of a provision finally i think mechanisms of venture capital and private capital coming into these institutions in some form sahyadri has given us an example of the possibility for that uh, we need to see much more of that coming largely to accelerate the growth process so what would take 5 years or 6 years or 8 years to happen we could compress that into 2 to 3 years by capitalizing this with private capital through some form of a private set company or a joint venture these kind of uh, structures should work finally i think the last point i would like to make is that institutional building is a long term process so we should not uh, pressure cooker approach not work so 
we need to give the necessary time for these institutions to build and give the relevant space for grassroots or local institutions to actually steer this program. So trying to have a consultant model uh, will be a formula for disaster. So we need to more and more strengthen local institutions in this process which put, could be community-based organizations, would, could be professional organizations. Both these models are equally workable. And these are some uh, broader high-level observations that I have. And I think uh, I wish all success. Uh, had a wonderful time uh, being listening into all the wonderful experiences of people. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you, Mare. I think it's a very nice uh, summary. And then taking out some of the uh, highlights that, um, uh, what do you call, uh, shine from among the wealth of uh, knowledge that was shared. I think I will now try and uh, provide a few concluding remarks before I hand over to um, Water and the Kobari. I, I think basically we all know that um, this was an attempt at organizing small farmers, which are who are 85% of all the holdings in the country, uh, in a manner that they get uh, a better uh, means of negotiating access to market, whether it is technical services, finance, actual marketing of crops, what have you, so that the livelihood situation improves. I think to look at the history of this, the Yogindra Allah committee, when they suggested uh, a legislation on this, it was more a demutualizing cooperatives, how to make them work more like corporates. Um, but we have passed the law which actually brings in a corporate culture right from the beginning, not as a cooperative, but as a corporate in certain respects. But the community form of organization still underlies this, which is also one of the issues in mobilizing capital resources and other kind of resources in the initial years, which is why Murray was talking about the patience needed in the initial stages. It is not only the money, but also the business practices that have to settle in. I think overall, when we look at the landscape, the three successful examples we got from Vilas, Krishna, and Amitaji, they're excellent examples. But the universe of 17,000 plus FPCs and the number of cooperatives whose number we do not know, it is not exactly this. Uh, these are islands of excellence. So how do we convert a larger proportion of FPOs into uh, much bigger, much better uh, member-linked, member-friendly organization that deliver value. I think some of the things when we examine the successful ones that comes across is, how do you build first the relationship between you and the farmer member? How do you um, generate loyalty from the member to the company so that when procurement season comes, the farmer thinks, this is my first place where I will go and sell, my FPO, not being tempted by other people. The second probably is that most farmers and FPOs have a price focus when it comes to developing business, whereas the focus should be on productivity. It is not what the farmer gets per kilo. It, it matters really. But in the long run, what does he get per acre per season of cropping? Uh, the examples which uh, I think uh, Sahihadri talked about, they went into crops, they went into productivity issues, they looked at the quality improvement, which will establish a good market at a high price. Same thing goes for um, Sahaja, Make, trying to find a niche. So what you produce, you try to improve the quality and quantity of produce. And overall, what you get as a result per unit of land per season, then you don't really talk about what is the price per kg that I will get. Because you have to talk about income that you produce, not about whether I got the highest price in the market. The third also is uh, how do we ensure a level playing field in procuring goods from our own farmers? Um, there are, I think, uh, Sahaja's example of uh, providing with sell price. Can we actually in, uh, ensure farmers that regardless of when they sell, they are going to get a fair price during the season? That if you come early, you will get more. If you come late, you will get more. Not that, but any part of the season you come and then as long as it is the year's marketing effort, we are able to provide you stable prices so that there is a stable level playing field for farmers to come and participate, which is again will be an issue in loyalty. Uh, and also becoming market oriented. All the three examples showed that, yeah, there were grant subsidy support systems, but people went outside of this to ensure they have a market present. They are able to 
they meet the market forces head on and they are able to access funds from mainstream because when you scale up from a very small institution to a larger institution the grant funds they dry up even if they are available as a proportion of total business they are so tiny that chasing the grant becomes a full time job for somebody and then you lose out on business opportunities otherwise so how do i build myself to be free of subsidies and grants after my uh, what do you call childhood is over and what should be the period of my childhood these are some decisions so when i try to scale up very necessarily to be taken and of course um, the point that anita ji made which again sridhar came in later on the need for having comprehensive information about our own organization so that there is a reliable basis for planning a reliable basis for marketing and also taking the institution outside outside its current comfort zone so i am able to deal with input supplier output marketers processor government anybody who comes yes we have got all member level information member to company level information we can give you any predictions any projection we can do analytics ourselves um, so uh, i guess um, sahyadri is in that place because they are already having blockchain based data analytics already going they understand precisely what quantities will come from where and what kind of uh, what do you call thresholds it will meet to meet uh, what do you call go different markets meaning this kind of digitization if you start in the beginning when the company is small probably you are able to do it much better and uh, then it becomes a habit it is not something you have to do in the mid life of the company so overall i think uh, it has been a fantastic uh, afternoon uh, with several thought processes uh, experience of successful practitioners and also uh, contributions from those who are part of the ecosystem uh, so it's my uh, i am my great gratitude and uh, thanks to marre vilas krishna somesh anita ji then uh, bala and sridhar thank you all for being present for being patient and also for all the participants who clocked in with their question i know that i have not been able to ask each and every question over there i have tried to fairly distribute time across the different people who are asked the question and also across the panelists over here the panelists are not going anywhere their contact information arjuna will make available to you uh, you should be able to just not ask for answers from them you can actually ask for solutions which work for them that will benefit you so uh, thank you arjuna back to you thank you very much uh, srinivasan uh, sir and to all the panelists and presenters i just want to add only one point to say that uh, the range of issues that have been highlighted today shows that uh, this is just the start of this conversation around how do we integrate uh, sustainable farming practices and resilient incomes through fpos we are really happy uh, and uh, with, uh, with, the, with the way this has gone about and hope to keep in touch to carry this conversation forward i will uh, now call upon uh, our uh, director sandeep chadav uh who is himself quite an expert on fpos especially around the grassroots uh, issues on building uh, uh, this 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 uh, space um i call upon sandeep jadhav to make a final uh, formal vote of thanks sandeep thank you arjuna this has been uh, <clears throat> enriching uh, two hours for me as well and uh, uh, all this uh, credit goes to the presenters panelists and uh, uh, people who are attending this so i would like to actually begin by thanking uh, mr n srinivasan who has been there for uh, all the time that we wanted and support that uh, he has provided uh, i would like to specially thanks uh, thank mr vilas shinde because uh, i had uh, some interesting discussions uh, with him long time back and that gave us inspiration to have this particular event so i think uh, vilas deserves that big thank uh thanks to all the other presenters and panelists like uh, emmanuel mare for setting up context as well as closing up uh, very nicely to krishna prasad to somesh anita malage for showcasing the great work of your pos to mr ishwaran not to forget mr balakrishnan as well from rutti for your valuable inputs into panel discussion i must mention uh, dr venkatesh tagat who has been like uh, there for every kind of brainstorming and planning for this particular event uh, and uh, he has been kind enough to give that much of time and lot of trouble that we gave him in the planning process i would also like to thank the team working behind the scenes and arjuna srinidhi is one of them and anukriti uh, they are from basically kobari secretariat they are handling all these kinds of events uh, for ikobari 
we have got Zaheer, Robin, Dada for taking care of all the things from IT to communication and to outreach to all those who are interested. And last but not the least, a big thanks to a wonderful audience we had today. And all the questions that you raised and then uh, provoked uh, us to think out, think up on it. Uh, we are sorry that we could not take all of them uh, today, but I think there's a uh, big to big things to come up in 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 the future as well. So thanks to everyone, and then um, happy evening. Bye bye.